Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the video on the Boston Red Sox making the postseason and how they got there. If you always like the videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really keeps the channel going, and we appreciate your support. I'll be doing a preview to the wild card game later today prior to that ball game. But let's get into the biggest reasons why the Red Sox made the playoffs. Uh, let's not just sugarcoat this. One is a guy that's really been pretty damn lethal for the Red Sox since he came into the major leagues, and that is the young, great third baseman, Rafael Devers. Rafael Devers was a man on a mission this year. He had 113 RBIs, a 890 OPS, 279 average, 38 home runs. He was an absolute monster this year, that is for damn sure. You also have Xander Bogarts, who kept doing his thing, 23 home runs, 79 RBI. Um, not the best season Bogey would want to have, but that's still, if you're going to have a season you wouldn't want to have, that's definitely still a pretty damn good one. Then you had a guy that's been up and down during part of the seasons, of course, closed out the season a little bit struggle bunnying. But a guy that has great power, had 78 RBI, 25 home runs, still got a lot of faith in this kid, is Bobby Dahlbeck, and he's a home run, home run excuse me, waiting to happen. So if you're in a close game, put two guys on base, all of a sudden you could be up by two if you were down by one. So that's why he's a great player to have on your team, particularly in Fenway as a righty, just picking on that green monster. Now, um, another guy that was great for the Red Sox to come in that just is a great energizer bunny, a great guy in the locker room, Enrique Kike Hernandez, a.k.a. A guy that has 60 RBIs, 20 home runs, can play any position for you, a good fielder at pretty much any of those positions. That's a big one. But we're also saving the best for last. Rafael Devers is really the best guy this year, but the best acquisition for last which was Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro had a career year this year for the Boston Red Sox. Um, uh, also, Kyle Schwarber did really well. He finished with 71 RBIs at the end of this year. But Hunter Renfro had a career year of a 259 average and 96 just missing out on 100 RBIs, 96 RBIs, and 31 home runs. So realistically, the two carrying weights of that lineup were Hunter Renfro and Rafael Devers. Then you had other guys like Bogarts, like Bobby Dahlbeck, and others, J.D. when he was not injured, um, really mixing in and playing well in the lineup. So that's what you really need this team to do. You're going to need these guys to continue to hit because obviously the big caveat with this team, which is why they ended up being the wild card team, unfortunately, as I am a fan of the Red Sox. They're my AL team. They've always been my AL team since my dad did business trips there. I've been up to Boston, and I love it and everything. But the big thing and bugaboo here is the pitching. You're going to obviously need these guys to step up and actually play well. You can't um, struggle when it comes to the pitching here. And then this year also, J.D. Martinez, of course, still played very well, uh, mixing in, playing very well in between Devers and Hunter Renfro, being the third um, RBI guy there, having 99, or excuse me, the second RBI guy, having 99 RBIs and 28 home runs and a 286 average. So the Red Sox obviously were thrived more by their lineup. At the start of the season, they did really well because of the Pavettas of the world and others pitching more consistently. That fell off. Now they're thriving more because of the lineup, and that's really what got them into the playoffs. That's why, compared to other videos that I did on how the teams got in the playoffs, I really highlighted their lineup. Now, when it comes to pitching, a guy, though, that you have to highlight is Nathan Evaldi, who really stepped up for Chris Sale being out. He's going to be the guy pitching in the wild card game, which I think is very well deserved for him. He had a 3.75 ERA, but won 11-9, 195 strikeouts. Pitched a bunch of innings this year and seemed to always be there when you needed him most. Like, of course, ending the losing streak, getting that one win um, against, the, against the O's, excuse me, um, and actually stepping up. So he's always seemed to do that this year. And then now, of course, you have Chris Sale back, who's been pitching very well. That's a huge bonus to have. Uh, Nick Pavetta looked good closing out the final games. Hopefully, he's able to build upon that 
and get some growth there and actually maybe have more consistency like he did at the beginning of the season, obviously, rather than the end of the season there. That would be great to see from Nick Pavetta. Now, when it comes, though, to pitching out of the pen, a guy we must highlight that really did emerge out of any or nowhere, excuse me, that's great because he was a Yankees draft pick. It's perfect as Sox fans to steal somebody from them and have him become great, is Garrett Whitlock. He's 8-4, 196 ERA, and pitched 73 innings out of the pen. That's huge. And pitched in 46 games. Whitlock's been a hidden gem for the Red Sox this year, and he's pitched very well. So in their issues when it comes to pitching, many of them, Garrett Whitlock has emerged. Nathan Evaldi has continued to impress in Boston. And then you, of course, have Chris Sale coming back. So at least you have that going for you. Other than that, there has been a lot of consistencies. Tanner Hoke has been pretty good in, 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 in excuse me, 18 games. Uh, he has a 3.52 ERA and 87 strikeouts in 69 innings. So I think he's a good guy to use. You can use him in all different caveats. I feel like he's a guy that'll pitch a couple innings if the Red Sox are able to get in the playoffs rather than just in this wild card game. So he's an interesting cat to follow. But rather than just him, those other guys I mentioned, those are the guys that have really been consistent and hoking a much smaller sample size. So I think the Red Sox are obviously going to need guys like Adovino, guys like Robles to step up and be more consistent. Guys like Ryan... um. Brazier, for example, who's pitched very good in nine game or excuse me, in thirteen games this year, if they decide to use him to kind of step up and be good because you just didn't have that bullpen. That bullpen was like Eckersley said in the last week of the season. Everybody was sitting on the edge of their seats you're following and sitting on the edge of your seat on every pitch just because of how inconsistent the pitching is. If you had a bullpen that was very consistent, you ain't going to be sitting on the mm -hmm. edge of your seat every pitch because you're going to go, okay, this guy's got it. He's going to lock it down. He's going to bring it home. They don't have that this year. So hopefully guys are able to step up. You always go all hands on deck and do what you have to do. That's why I think if they get in the playoffs, a guy like Hoke will become very important because he can go multiple innings, especially if somebody gets roughed up early. The Red Sox have the offense to come back, but you can't keep that pitcher in. To keep getting rough up, you can maybe go with someone like a Tanner Hoke. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. This has been on the Boston Red Sox making the postseason. Congratulations, Red Sox fans. You're in the postseason in the wild card game playing the Yankees tonight. Hopefully the Red Sox are able to win that game. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe down below or on this wonderful widget up above that makes it easy. Stay safe out there, everybody, and enjoy the MLB postseason. It is here. Go Sox. Peace out, everybody.